Zenny watched the wooden bat thwack the baseball, hurling it high and straight. He was eight years old, and it was the first time he'd seen a baseball game, but he was hooked. Father, I want to play, he told his dad. You're too small, his father said. Too frail, added his mother. But Zenny didn't listen. He had to play. The other kids laughed at him. Zenny, you're a mouse, one boy hooted. A teeny tiny one, another kid called. None of it mattered. When Zenny had a ball or bat in his hand, he felt like a giant, and soon he played like one. Many springs had passed since that first game, years of playing in the chill of winter and the sweat of summer. Zenny got taller and stronger and better at baseball. Why are you wasting time with a silly game? His mother asked. You should study and become a doctor, his father said, or a lawyer. But Zenny knew exactly what he wanted to do, and when he grew up, he coached managed and played baseball in the Fresno Nisei League and the Fresno Twilight League. He was barely five feet tall and weighed only 100 pounds, but he was a star player, casting a big shadow in baseball. Zenny was chosen to play with star members of the New York Yankees. He led his teams in exhibition games in Japan. He even arranged for Babe Ruth to play there. But that world collapsed for him when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941. For the first time since he had picked up a bat, Zenny felt as if he didn't measure up. The United States was at war with Japan, and 120,000 Americans of Japanese descent who lived on the West Coast were forced into 10 internment camps, most in the desert. The government considered these Japanese Americans to be possible spies and, without evidence or trials, locked them up. Men, women, and children. American citizens, all were treated like prisoners of war, housed in barracks and penned in with barbed wire. 